So today we're down here at our elderberry bushes and uh, we're pretty much in a full blown attack from beetles and things of that nature. And um, we're going to go ahead and prevent a bunch of that today so I thought I'd take you guys with me. So what we're going to do today is going to work for any kind of fruit tree, berry bushes, anything like that that you want to protect. You can even use this for sweet corn. Uh, it does work with birds. It'll keep things off of your corn also like beetles and things of that nature. So here's our elderberries. These things are, uh, they're doing really good. But like I said, we're also in a full blown attack. And I'll show you what I mean right here. Now you can see all the damage those guys are doing to the leaves. And we do have berries coming along. So what we want to do is protect those berries. <clears throat> now we're not going to use this method for our flowers yet. We're going to leave the flowers alone until they do produce berries because uh, we don't want to cause a problem with mold or holding in too much moisture or anything like that so we're going to go up here and show you guys what we're going to do to prevent these little boogers from getting back in here okay so here we are up here at the garden deck and uh, what i have here is some organza mosquito netting um, there's all kind of names for it i think uh, the label for this is called tool which is t-u-l-l-e -L -L -E. so we have that up here we also have a pair of scissors you're going to need some scissors now yours don't have to be pioneer woman but you do need a good pair of scissors we're also going to grab ourselves some string and uh, we'll show you guys what we do with this now you can buy this stuff in rolls you can buy it in squares you can buy it in pieces uh, and all it is is just a netting it lets air in it lets sun in water and uh, we're going to go ahead and use this today on our elderberry first thing we're going to do is we're going to unroll this stuff out and uh, this is a roll so we're going to roll this out of, I don't know however it's big enough to cover one cluster and we're going to go ahead and cut across here with our scissors and we'll show you the next step okay so my tripods broke I didn't have nobody really record but all I did was I unfolded this stuff and I cut two pieces and you can see it's a pretty good piece it's probably about 36 inches by 24 inches and all we're going to do is go in here and drape this over the berries and we'll show you that now okay so here we are back down here at the elderberry and these are the flowers in case you didn't know uh, these flowers will fall off and then the berries will come in behind them it's basically the same thing the flower is just an appendage on the end of the berry so as the berries form the flowers rot and fall off we are not going to cover these flowers because these clusters are really bad about holding in moisture and if we wrap these I'm just afraid we're going to have some kind of mold or we're going to hold in too much moisture so what we always do is wait until these things are completely gone and they're starting to make berries here's one in transition now I'll show you this one's about halfway done as you can tell the beetles has already started their damage <clears throat> and uh, we're getting hit pretty hard by the birds too and I'll show you that as you can see Right here we have some good berries, but you can also see all these little empty slots here, these little empty forks that don't got berries. It's where the birds has come in and robbed us of the berries. So uh, that's why we're doing this today, and we're also going to stop those beetles from coming in here. We don't have to worry about the pollination or anything like that. These nets won't really stop the pollination, and also these things are making berries, so we're already done with the pollination phase. So all we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all these little suckers right here is gone and off. That one just fell off. There he is right down there. So you want to make sure that your clusters don't have any bugs on them before you wrap them up. And again, my tripod's broke, so uh, I'll go ahead and just cover it up best I can and uh, show you what we're going to do. So... Like I said, these nettings will let rain in. They will also let pollen in. Uh, they will not let bees, any type of bug, after you get it on here. Uh, they're not going to let birds of anything like that in here. But as you can see, it's really um, great for letting light and stuff like that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to bunch this stuff up. We're not going to leave it draped over. And we're going to bunch it up all around the end. And uh, we're going to go all the way around through here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. But I'm going to take it and we're going to bunch it up just like that right there. And we're going to tie it. 
after we get it all bunched up and make sure that there's no way that bugs can get back in here it's all going to be bunched up here we're probably going to use some mason cord or some twine something like that and just keep it there and uh, that's pretty much all you need this thing has plenty of names like I said it's tool wedding veil mosquito net organza there's all kind of names for it um, it's relatively cheap this depends on where you get it from but it can get pretty expensive if you start buying pre-made stuff that already has drawstrings and anything in it so uh, as you can tell we have a lot of work to do uh, making these pouches wrapping some of these uh, ones that already have the flowers gone and are already making berries and <clears throat> we're gonna leave these guys alone and we'll go ahead and wrap those just as soon as the flowers fall off and we're also going to come back through with a good organic spray made by Monterey and uh, we're going to get these beetles off these leaves and stuff so they don't cause any more damage keep these elderberry from going in stress now I also wanted to mention if it matters to anybody this does come in color all kind of different colors because it is used in the fashion world of course but uh your best is to stay with white you can go with black if you want to uh, black is just fine also i think black draws in a little more heat rather than reflecting it but at the same time this stuff is so thin and frilly i don't really think it matters however you don't want to use colors like red yellow blue anything that has to do with flower colors or berry colors because you're just going to attract even more stuff and th even though they can't get in there you don't want them up here packed really tight on top of here and blocking your sunlight and trust me beetles can get so bad they can actually block out the light we have them terrible here okay, i got four or five done i figured i'd show you guys before we ended the video you can use bread ties uh just anything to crimp this stuff together but we just have some simple mason twine there and from afar it just looks like your spider webs or something on your berry bushes we're just gonna keep on working but that's the gist that's all it is to it like i said the best you could use is probably white or black there's all types of grades of this stuff so you want one that'll last outdoors at least for one or two seasons you can reuse this stuff if you get it strong enough but it does cost more money sometimes this stuff only lasts a season but it's worth its weight in gold if it does this job i'm sure some of you has already tried a method like this and it didn't work with squirrels just remember squirrels and rabbits will chew right through this if they want it bad enough but as far as bugs beetles birds of any type this will work perfect black or white is the best color again you don't want to attract a bunch of stuff with you know different colors as far as red yellow orange even blues things of that nature we're just going to keep on we don't have many more to wrap and uh again we're going to leave these guys right here alone until they transition because there's just too much there and it'd be really easy to hold too much moisture in and cause a even bigger problem than what you have with the beetles hey everybody that's it i'll try to show you a picture of what these bushes look like once we're done it's really easy just cut you a square big enough to go around each head or each flower cluster so remember not to get your drawstring or whatever you tie these things up with tight I'm sorry I'm not gonna be able to show you tying them all up again I don't have a tripod nobody's here to help me film everybody's working I hope this helps if you guys uh, have anything else that you use uh, other than organza or tool or anything like that uh, just let us know in the comments and if you use this let us know how it helps I want to thank you guys for watching uh, miss getting dark so i gotta hurry up and get back to it but i will post a picture later on maybe on the community page again thank you guys for watching and we hope this helps